Hey, welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. It is late afternoon, Sunday, the 20th of August, 2023. Um, I've got the rest of the countersinking that's necessary to do the top skins and the leading edges to do today. I'm not sure if I'll get through all of it today, but we'll give it a go. Um, I made a comment at the end of the previous video about something about needing an emergency eyewash station, and I don't think that it was very clear, but here's what happened. Uh, yesterday when I was finishing up, I reached over to push the button to turn off the fan. And when I did a little metal shaving, probably off the back of my hand or somewhere, blew up around my glasses and into my eye. And I realized I didn't have the proper equipment to safely rinse out my eye. So I was in the kitchen with a glass of water uh, trying to get it done. So today you might also see me installing my newly purchased uh, emergency eyewash station that should have been here already. That's the kind of the safety plan in my shop. Uh, have something happen and then buy the thing that I should have had in the first place. So anyways, we'll get after it. Thanks for being here. This is episode 94. By the end of this week, I think that we'll have the leading edges and the top skins uh, mounted on these wings, which means potentially, potentially, by the end of this week, I can take down these wing stands and put these uh, assemblies on the cradle. That would be great. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for being here. Oh, and uh, let's build an airplane. Okay, let me start just by apologizing for the crappy autofocus situation there in the intro. Um, so as I was going through the settings on my camera, I realized that it actually does record in 4K in 23.976 frames, which is what I have switched to with the GoPro. Um, but as we saw, it doesn't do it very well. It doesn't handle autofocus very well when you shoot in 4K on that camera. And it does something else weird with the sensor. It, it uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it almost, um, it cuts the, the length of the focus in half. So uh, as if it were the same lens, but zoomed in quite a bit. Anyways, we'll, we won't be doing that again. So now we know. Uh, that camera is a good camera, but it was never really designed for 4K. That was just sort of, a, I think, a little selling point um, when 4K wasn't really that uh, common yet. And now we know why. Uh, so here I'm putting up that eyewash station that I talked about um, for obvious reasons. I'm <laughs> happy to have it. Um, what did I do? Oh, I just went in and filled the bottles with distilled water. That'll work for me. Relocate my uh, my little uh, handy dandy first aid kit, which I have used a number of times. I'm happy to have a few. If you're wondering what's going on there on the right side of the screen, um, this is the Hurricane Hillary, I think maybe, um, or tropical storm that is hitting Los Angeles, which is where my children live. Um, so I'm paying attention to it. Uh, and they had a 5.1 earthquake during the storm. So what a day. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, started off the day doing this. I was only in the shop for, boy, I got a really late start. And so not even, not even two hours, I don't think. Um, I said yesterday that I wasn't going to do any riveting, rather, uh, countersinking on the bottom halves, the bottom sides, the lower flanges of these main spars. Yet here I am working on the lower flanges of the main spars. Let me explain why. Um, I can't do, as we're looking at it, there are basically two rows of rivet holes on that flange. An upper row or forward row, which is where the leading edges will attach, and then a lower row where the uh, main skins, the bottom main skins will attach. I'm not touching any of the holes for the bottom main skins, but I do still have to countersink all the ones. That upper row of them all need to be countersunk so that I can attach the leading edges. Um, and then in the inboard portion, um, look at the middle of the, the wing on the left. It's the right wing, but it's the wing on the left. Um, and you see that green bar there. That's the tie down attach. Um, in board of that, that portion going towards the far end of the room, that is where the fuel tanks attach. 
And yesterday we talked about those handful, like five or six random um, rivet holes that do need to be countersunk for a flush rivet to fit underneath the, the overlap of the, the tank skin. Uh, anyway, so I will do that as well. And um, so starting out here, I'm doing the normal stuff. I'm doing the countersinking for the, um, for the leading edge skins so that those dimpled skins can fit in there and we can get that all handled here really in the next couple of days, which I'm really uh, pretty stoked about. Um, once that's done, then I'll move on to the other end, the far end of that same right wing, and I'll just hit those, ooh, I forget what it is, one, two, three, four, five, six or seven, um, six or seven uh, rivets, or rather rivet holes that need to be countersunk for a rivet alone, and not for a dimple. So I'll switch to my other, glad to have two now, my other, um, countersink cage that's already set up for that depth and we'll do those and that's as much as I got done in this evening's uh, session um, as hot as it has been and as much as I've complained about it I think that today is actually the hottest day of the year when you thought it couldn't get any hotter and I didn't turn the AC on the garage until late in the day so um, it still stayed under 90 but it definitely wasn't cool um, and uh, why rush it? I, I mean, honestly, I've got all the time in the world right now. It seems like with the writers on strike and with the actors on strike and without a fuselage kit on order. And then also, um, you know, once I get these um, top skin, leading edges and top skins on, the next step would be to build the flaps and the ailerons, which I cannot do because um, both of them have a number of critical laser cut parts that are a part of that list. And so I'm not gonna do anything new with laser cut parts I have that aren't already in the airplane. So I once I get these skins, um, in, and I think that'll have this stu that stuff done by the end of this week, it's Sunday as I record this. Once that stuff is done by the end of the week, then I'll backtrack and work on um, fixing the leaks in the tanks. Um, and then we'll see what we're able to work on after that. I was thinking, uh, you know, I still have the, the tips, the fiberglass tips for parts of the empennage, but it's possible that, possible, <laughs> I don't think it's likely, but it's possible that that stuff might all have to come apart. So I guess after I fix the leaks in the tank, I'll go ahead and inspect all the empennage parts thoroughly and uh, get in there with the bore scope and, and see what we can see. Um, I think, you know, now having seen a number of the really bad um, holes that, that just wouldn't be cleaned up by final size drilling, I don't recall seeing anything nearly as ugly as um, what those are. Um, I showed you an example a few videos ago of a hole before and after final size drilling the hole. The hole had a notch in it from laser cutting because the insert and exit part for the laser were at the same point. We know that's how it happens. But um, after the after just reaming the hole, just the normal operation with this particular kit of final size drilling that hole, uh, there's no longer a notch in the hole that was cleaned up. You could still see a little bit of that discoloration, um, which is really nothing. It's not, uh, it's immaterial. Um, so, and that's the reason I showed you that one. That's from one of the, actually, if you look at the shelves in the distance and then all the way down by the floor, um, you see a skinny part down there that looks like it has a series of holes in it. That's a flat brace, and that was the, I basically went through some of the parts that I had that I knew were laser cut to see if I could find a nasty hole to show you guys, and that was, as, that was the worst hole that I could find. Um, so anyways, I, I, I'm, I'm an optimist by nature. I don't know when that happened, but sometime uh, I became an optimist, and uh, anyways, so I'm holding on to hope that, that that's, uh, I will get those parts replaced because why not? Um, but as, as far as the parts that I've already installed in the empennage, 
Um, I will not be surprised if during the inspection I cannot find any uh, cracked dimples. Um, I just haven't, uh, I don't think that I got as unlucky as some uh, with that. So now you see that I've moved on to those handful, uh, let me see if I can figure it out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven um, rivet holes um, at the top of seven ribs, seven main ribs um, that need to be countersunk. Um, and by the way, that doesn't have to happen right now. I mean, those tanks are going to go on and come off a number of times, so that could almost be done at any point in the future, but why not do it now since I am uh, <laughs> in the business of doing hundreds and hundreds of countersinks. So uh, tomorrow we will see if I can get all of the left wing, which is on the right side of the screen, I know it's confusing, but if I can get all of the necessary countersinking on the left wing done tomorrow, um, which I would imagine just based on how the right wing went it's probably going to be a solid four hours of just countersinking. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. So, anyways, a little bit of cleanup, uh, just trying to manage all of the metal shavings. These uh, metal shavings are like dust compared to when you're drilling. So, it really does make a mess. Anyways, thanks for being here. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, all that good stuff. Episode 94 is in the can. We'll see you on 95.